Okay guys, uh, this is uh, two ball planks. So, um, yeah, I'm not going to lie, that was an amusing name. Let's, uh, these are our two balls in this case. This is the one, and this is the other. Let's start with the basic one. Um, planks, dead straightforward, we're just going to make this slightly more uh, functional, basically. So, um, if this is a plank, the elbows go down. Let me, let me get into how this should be taught, if it's taught really well. Um, I tell people, take, your, take one leg out, get ready for your core to accept the load of your pelvis, right? Because you've got a lot of weight around here in your pelvis, and what's really happening in the plank is that when this other leg goes out, the abs switch on, and what they're stopping is this. So its technical name is anti-extension. If you look at the shape of my back, that's an extension. And when the abs are shortened, they prevent extension. So that's an anti-extension. Now, if you don't switch the abs on first, you can end up in a bad position before you've even got on it. So I like to tell people, put one leg out, get the other one, really clutch control of the tension, get yourself on. Uh, make sure you're not locking the shoulders. Yeah, we want to feel the sort of weight go through the elbows, just like supporting structure. Chest, sort of feeling, a little bit of tension. Shouldn't be pressing into lower back, so you can lift the hips just a tiny bit to make sure of that. Switch the abs on. Don't want to be peaked or sagged, and you're looking for mostly neutral. If anything, just ever so slightly above it, so that the abs can hold that line for you. And that is a good plank. Um, so, what we're going to do is we're then going to make that slightly more interesting. So, some of you may have what is often called a Swiss ball, uh, football, all sorts of things, uh, gimbal. Um, I'm used to the Swiss balls. Some of you may have one of these, so I'm going to show you this, and I'm going to show you one of these. Um, actually, here, yeah, what you'll notice is that they're unstable surfaces which adds a degree of instability, your core then has to, has to add that stability back um, and that's why it's a good exercise. So here we are, exactly the same basically, but we're going to go out, we're going to hold on. So this is one of our ball planks. Yeah, you can stir that, makes it quite interesting, as long as it doesn't aggravate the back, make the abs react. These kind of things are actually more effective than you would think, really useful for athletes and performance, because they do challenge the nervous system no matter how subtly. That's it, so that's one ball plank. And the other ball plank is going to be slightly more challenging even than, than that. So, let's have a look here. Uh, this one is going to be in a press up position on the ball, so it's more like a high plank, really. I'm going to go to here. Yeah, so we're just going to hold. Again, don't overdo the shoulders, let your weight fall through mid chest. There you go. And you can make this kind of more difficult. If you, if you feet it together, then you'll be slightly more unstable. If they're wide, you'll be more stable. Um, if you do put them together, you could play with elevating the leg, bringing it back down, and the other side as well. Um, so, there you go, two ball planks. Essentially what you're doing is you're taking a plank which is quite stable, and you're adding different degrees of instability to it. Um, that helps, to, uh, helps the body to get the condition in the muscles, um, but it also helps the nervous system to kind of react and adjust. So it's actually um, got quite an interesting effect for anyone who's playing the game um, or trying to perform in a sport or an activity. It's quite healthy to have that unstable uh, effect, not only just because of muscle condition, but because of what the nervous system learns from that as well. Um, there you go, two ball perks, enjoy.